guys, welcome back to The Garage Couple. For those of you just tuning in, my name is Aline, drive a monster of a JK on 37s. And my name is Greg, I am a physician practicing medicine in Southern California, and I drive this monster of a Jeep Wrangler TJ on 38s. And on the weekends, we love to spend time in the garage and love having you along for the ride. So, for today's episode, we are going to be adding amazing bass, amazing sound for a small cost and excited to show you how. So stay tuned to watch us install this box of sound as well as talk about some updates. Hint, it involves this ginormous adjustable wrench. So stay tuned to see all the content. Oh, and if you haven't done so, check out some of our merch below. Aline spends a lot of time making that merchandise, so if you haven't checked it out, feel free to check it out below. It is just on the YouTube video below. So, without further ado, let's get started. So just want to start this video with a couple of announcements. Many, many different viewers, some nice, some not so nice, brought to our attention that we tightened the jam nuts on the front adjustable control arms the wrong way. So we actually used vice grips. We didn't have any wrench, such as this one, that fits over those jam nuts. So what we did was we listened to our viewers, always happy to take feedback. As we mentioned, we are not mechanics. We are working professionals that like to do this in our spare time, just like most of our viewers, I'd imagine. Now we went ahead and purchased this wrench and when I went to go and tighten it, I could it would not budge. So I tried to loosen it and guess what? It was on there so tight despite only using vice grips. So many, many people said, ah, it's the wrong way to do it. You'll never be able to tighten it properly. You might as well hand tighten it. Man, are you guys all wonderful. Wonderful individuals. Thank you for the tips, you guys. We're always open for feedback. We're not professionals and we're learning along with the ride. So we'll take the feedback kindly. So use an adjustable wrench and never worry about it. But if you're in a pinch on the trail XYZ, you could go ahead and use vice grips and probably get away with it. Next announcement. Person that won our MotoFab lift kit, delivered. Person who won our LED headlights and fog lights, shipped, will be receiving it in a couple of days. So stay tuned for the ride as we tend to give away lots and lots of items. We have some amazing giveaways planned for the month of December. Holidays! So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so now so you don't miss out on any of those giveaways. Why don't we get started? Let's get into it. Why don't you tell us about this? So this is a Rockville 8 inch 400 amp 400 watt subwoofer. We are planning on putting this thing under the rear seat on the TJ. As many of you know, there is very limited space on the TJ and so the fact that it goes under the rear seat is honestly such a win. Now, we have very limited number of tools here. As you can tell, we are not at our home. So we have with us here some simple electrical tools as well as some sockets and a ratchet. We have the optional Rockville wiring kit as well as some extra wire and electrical connectors. The links to all of these items, including my wife, will be in the description below. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> Can't. Uh, so look how sleek this looks, you guys, on a different note. Look at it. Look at all your inputs and outputs. That looks amazing. Super thin. It's going to fit so smooth underneath. So I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to put this in. We're also going to test it out and review it. We have never installed this product before. We bought this with our own money. We have no affiliation with Rockville whatsoever other than buying their products for our Jeep Wranglers. Several different inputs. There's two ways to connect your vehicle to this. You could use um, high level and low level inputs. Now one of them just plugs right into an aftermarket head unit which is what we have or you could just tap into some of your speaker wires. Either way, this kit comes with everything you're going to need to get the job done. Speaking of which, why don't we go ahead and crack this thing open and take a look. Looks like it comes with some of that low level input as well as a fuse and some extra wiring. Looks like there's also some clips, zip ties and some sheathing over here. So. Looking at the sub itself, it's actually really heavy. This is a really heavy unit. It looks very solid. We chose the 8-inch model because we didn't want to have any issues with fitment. 
Plus, it's a small cap. I don't really think we need a 10 like Aline's and a, or a 12. Now, there's all the connections over here. There's the signal wire, which allows you to control the level of bass, as well as some of the adjustments. Now, the nice thing about this unit, it will turn on by itself when you turn your radio on. So you don't have to have a separate switch to, tr to power this one on. Like Aline's. <laughs> no, Aline's doesn't need a switch. You're, you don't manually turn your woofer on. Hmm. Dog life. On oh, my base. All right, so why don't we go ahead and open the trunk and look at what we have to work with. Hey, look at all this wiring. So we're not actually going to need to use this one because our Jeep already has it installed. It is relatively simple to, to go ahead and just take your dash apart and install this low level input. And also it could be it could be high level input. I did not double check before making this video. <laughs> I've been working all day. I work in the ICU right now. There are a lot of patients that I take care of. I did not have the patience nor the time to research the individual name of this wire, but I do think it's a low level input. Why don't we go ahead and open our trunk? If you haven't seen our install of the tire carrier video, this is the Highline tire carrier. It basically has no extra hinges, opens with the tailgate, yet the weight of this massive 38 inch tire rests on that bumper. So why don't we go ahead and take a look here. Let us take some of this stuff out. <laughs> Looks like we need to do some cleaning, yes, huh? That is, that is, uh... <laughs> so this is how it's gonna fit. Just lift, place, and bring it down. Let's see if it clicks. Everything's in place. Wow. As if it's not even there. Now you have all your trunk room to have nasty, nasty leaves like so, and we can continue on by the wiring. Why don't we start wiring? Let's do it. So let's talk about the wiring. It comes with this clip that you go ahead and plug it directly into the subwoofer itself. It has a positive wire, a negative wire, a signal wire, as well as some other wires for the low level and high level input should you use them. Let's go ahead and review that now. So for our particular setup, we actually have the signal wire as well as this high level or low level input wire right over here. So we're going to just go ahead and run this. But if you haven't done this step, all you have to do is connect it to the rear of your aftermarket unit. Now, if you have the original unit, not a problem. We made a video on doing that without an aftermarket unit. I will put the link to it below where we installed an underseat subwoofer on Aline's Jeep Wrangler JK. So why don't we go ahead and wire this underneath the carpet and get it done now. Now also, before we do so, this is our signal wire. So this is the wire that's gonna tell the amplifier to turn on when our radio is on. As if you saw in a previous episode, we installed a six inch subwoofer in our center console where we had to repair this wire from the rear. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out as well. Lots of good information in that video. So for now, let's wire this to the rear. Not a good shot. So step one is to grab those wires and tuck it in all the way underneath. Don't want anyone seeing it or it being exposed all the way to the back. Tuck, 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 Greg. Gonna have to take my jacket off for this. Tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> Looking good, looking good, boss. And it is out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Half of the job is now done. We can just plug this in. We have the signal wire. The only other wire to run next is the, the, the power wire. Positive is gonna come from the battery. <laughs> Negative, we're just gonna bolt into some part on the frame and we should be in business. In business, just don't hit your head. <laughs> so this is the base controller. Typically people put this in the front of the vehicle, so somewhere where you can control it. We also have to run this wire, looks just like an ethernet cable. So we're gonna just run this next. Shouldn't be too hard, we're gonna just go down the middle, just like we did. Nice thing about this wire, it's actually flat and easy to run. Gonna leave, gonna put this in the front and run it back. But I'm gonna also bring the battery line first, the power wire first, so that we could run these two together so I don't have to do it twice. Ah, some Kirkland sparkling water. 
wouldn't be a Southern Californian if I didn't drink club soda. <laughs> All right, let's pop the hood. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just wire this in manually through the firewall, located right over there. Pauline, why don't you go ahead and show? Can't really tell. <laughs> Alrighty, I just passed it through. And it's going. And this is gonna get to the battery. Seems like it's long enough. Looks like we got some juice. What you got there, Greg? What's that wire? The base controller wire. I just placed the box over there for now. We'll see what we end up doing with it. All about that base. <laughs> and we are back to tucking, ladies and gentlemen. There is a lot of tucking in this one. Signal wire, low level audio input, power wire, and base adjuster wire. I'd say this is pretty well wired. Now we just have to crimp everything and we are literally moments away to plug it in. This install is taking us less than one hour. Can you believe it? I could believe it. Or see it. What? Now we just need a bolt so that we could use run our negative wire. For now, I'm gonna use this one over here because I don't actually have any Torx bits with me. Hopefully I can remove this without stripping it. Looks like we're fine. Out. Out it is. Gonna go ahead and now crimp this wire or strip this wire. Sorry, it is late. I'm gonna slide this in. Now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and place this 13 millimeter nut back into place. Make sure you tighten it really well, otherwise you're going to have grounding issues. Next, we're going to connect the other end to this wiring harness. Just go ahead and grab our negative. We're going to also have to strip off some off this end right here. Now it's time to do the same treatment to the power wire, which is this blue one that comes in the kit. Time to connect the signal wire. Are you Next, we're gonna move on to the signal wire. Same treatment. So to review, we have the power wire, the ground, also known as negative, and the signal wire. We also have the low level audio input, and that is all we need to do at this back end. So why don't we go ahead and just plug everything in now. We are fighting this new sundown early time, huh, Greg? <laughs> Work well for us. All right. Now that we have the terminal crimped on, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce this with some electrical tape. All we have to do is connect this to the positive terminal and that would be all. Then we're in showbiz, huh? The battery is still connected to the vehicle, so you have to be very, very careful uh, not to touch the frame as you install this part. Otherwise, you will get zapped. Now, the nice thing is this comes with an inline fuse rated here at looks like 40 amps, which should be sufficient. So all we have to do is just connect it right over there. Right over there, let's remove that and attach it and we're done. Scratch that, I'm gonna remove the negative terminal and I'm only gonna do so because I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. It would be very easy to zap yourself because if you touch the hood, fender, anything, you're getting zapped. So let's remove the negative terminal, de-electrify the entire frame and body of the vehicle. Then we could do whatever we want comfortably with the positive terminal and then we can go back into show business. Alrighty. We in showbiz yet? I'm gonna tighten the negative. 
that we can get to go try it. Let's do it. We'll come back later to zip tie these wires. I just want to make sure it works before we go into show business. <laughs> so once you connect the positive power to the battery and you turn on your radio, it should automatically turn on. There's a green indicator light right over there as well as an on and off button. Now there's three settings here which you can fine tune, but for now, let's see if it's working. I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in position. Or I guess let's do it like this so we can fiddle around with it. All right. Pauline come feel this. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is a bump. Oh. <laughs> wow. Time to wrap up. Wrapped up nice and tight. You can't see any piece of it. It fits so perfect. Huh, Greg? That is some stealth. We'll go ahead and we'll adjust those settings in a future episode. Uh, for now, we just want to get wrapping up because it's been a long day. And there you are. You have your trunk and you have your subwoofer hidden underneath. You could even put two or three of them if you'd like. You can connect them all in series. Honestly, the one sounds good. We're excited to break it in. Now why don't we go wrap up the video and make some more announcements. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, a subwoofer under your rear seat. That took all of one hour to install. And it sounds absolutely amazing. And you guys, it's affordable. That was $100 for a whole new sound in your Jeep. Well worth it. Now if you're looking for a similar subwoofer, we hope that this video has helped you make that decision as well as it helps you install it. As you can tell, it's very straightforward to install. And just as an FYI, subwoofers tend to get louder and louder as you use them. Just like anything else, they have a break-in period. So we're excited to not only mess with the settings on the subwoofer, mess with the settings on our head unit, but also, but also wait and see how it sounds after it starts to break in. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. We are literally giving away so many awesome things for the month of December and we're extremely excited to be able to do so. Now if you haven't checked out the merchandise, please check it out below. It definitely helps us out, helps us make these videos and it helps us buy these mods so that we can make these videos. So for now, we will leave you to it. Whoever wants this wrench, comment below. We'll go ahead and... <laughs> I'm just kidding. We need the wrench. We need the wrench. I need the wrench. I got too much flame for using vice grips. So thank you so much for watching. Check us out on Instagram, Garage Couple. And without further ado, will you be my wrenching buddy? Yes, I will. Up you go, buddy. <laughs>